All right, everybody, welcome to the last video in this series. This is going to be a much longer video because we're going to give examples over and over again, not only to learn the repetition that you'll need in order to do this task, but because we come up with so many different ways to lick at a vine during pruning. So we're going to cover a lot in this one and I'm gonna get right into it and I hope you enjoy. Hey folks, my name is Nick, I'm with Bootstrap Farmer and today I'm visiting a farm and we're helping rehab this very overgrown uh, tomato, indeterminate tomato house. Uh, this is utilizing the lean and lower method. However, uh, the reason we're here is because it gives us a good opportunity to show a lot of examples of uh, different things that the tomato vine may do with you and how to really prune aggressively tomatoes if they get out of hand. And given a long enough timeline, uh, you will get behind on your farm and it's more likely at some point your vines are going to look a little bit like this. The other thing that happens is that whenever you first start out, you're pretty intimidated. This is your most valuable crop. So you're not wanting to prune as aggressively as you may need to. This is my personal preference, the way that I used to do it at my place. Uh, I was very fortunate to be almost directly trained by Andrew Medford. Uh, from then to Johnny Selected Seeds, but now at uh, Growing for Market Magazine, he's got a lot of experience and he's who taught me. So. I probably prune a little bit more aggressive than he even he would like. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I talk a lot about in this video that you're eventually gonna develop your own style and the plant is really gonna decide uh, what it wants you to do. So I'm gonna give you some tips. I'm gonna give you some tricks and just different fundamentals of training an indeterminate tomato vine. We're gonna look at the different parts of the tomato vine and then we're going to show you the lean and the lower method. So. Take that with what you will and let's get after it. So in this video, we're going to talk about pruning the tomato as we're leaning and lowering. And again, this is for indeterminate single liter tomato vines. Some people will do two liters. The application's pretty much the same. I, like, I personally like to do single liter, so that's what we're going to do. So I always like to start this. We have a unique situation here. This row is very overgrown, so you get to see us really work these plants over. And if you notice, I'm gonna be real rough with these because they can take it. And a lot of people like to baby it, but we're farmers, we're, we're not gentle people. So we're just gonna get the job done. So as you see me kind of roughhousing these things, you're gonna see tomatoes fall off. That's okay, forgive yourself. You're gonna see stuff uh, kind of get beat up. That's okay. Part of these F1 uh, self-pollinating tomatoes, they need a little shaking. So as we go through and we're busting off the lines, everything's kind of shaken into place and it really helps uh, the plant get just a little bit more vigorous. So I always like to start down below. These have been pruned once already this season. Um, probably should have been pruned a little bit more, but what we're going to do is basically show you this has been pruned a little bit. We do have a little bit of room to work. So we're gonna work this vine up. We're gonna show you some details along the way and then we're gonna start the leaning lower process. Now, I've already done one in between to give myself a little bit of room, and that's going left. And what I like to do in a situation like this where they're in ground is every other one, I'll go left, and then every other one, I'll go right or behind. So front, left, and then right in the back. Your situation may be a little bit different. If, if for whatever reason, you think two needs to go to the front and left, and maybe one or two needs to go to the right, that's your call. There's no right or wrong. Just know that once you start that process, that's going to be what it does the rest of its life. So a good example of when that will be, and we'll show you, is if one vine is shorter or much taller, you may have to make that decision whenever you go. So let's start down below. So again, this is real typical of a piece of the vine for right now that has already been harvested. So you can see that this tomato cluster that we're going to pull off, all the tomatoes are already gone. Of course, we can get rid of that. And basically what we're going to do is cut off any sucker, any leaf, any harvested tomato cluster. If, if we have some of these little knobs, like this one's fine. I'm going to cut it just to show you that you can. But, but these knobs eventually will have the potential to get tangled up. So you're going to find over time what you like best. And either one of those is okay. So moving up the vine, this was basically what was harvested last week. So this is kind of where our attention is gonna be focused on. Again, we have a leaf cluster or a tomato cluster that has been harvested. So we're going to cut that off. We're also going to start removing leaves to get that single line. And here's a good example of this. 
vine has split. And when you first start out doing your tomatoes, this is more than likely going to be your highest value crop. So this may alarm you a little bit. I do feel that this clip is about four foot. I would much rather see you overuse the clips. And whenever you're clipping, there's two little plastic ears and the string is gonna go in between here and there's uh, some little grippers. So basically you set it on the line, kind of halfway close it, and then bring the single leader vine to the clip and clip it around. Now they can be unclipped if you wanna change it, no big deal. But I'll typically clip just right under where I want to support. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the call that because the vast majority of this has already been harvested and we have so many sets above this, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And so if you're saying, well that, you know, in a week or so that could be a tomato, that's true, but because we're gonna lean and lower this one here in a little bit, that is gonna put this on the ground, susceptible to bugs, susceptible to getting crushed on anyway. So let's go ahead and take all the energy that would have went into this tomato, and let's put it into some of these other clusters. And then we'll just continue on cutting. So I'm going to continue to make this single leader, taking off the leaves, old harvested clusters, suckers, I'm going to continue to clip and support the vine. And you're going to find your own way. My way might not necessarily be your way. I'm certainly rougher on the tomato plants than what you're likely to be when you first start out. And so now we're going to start the leaning and lower process. So as you can see, this vine has completely become overgrown, wrapped itself up inside the trusses and the wire. And we're going to pull all of that down. So the first thing I'm going to do is squeeze the roller hook assembly, and I'm gonna give myself some room to work with. This is slightly different than what you're gonna see had this been pruned all the way along and it was just a simple move, but I need to give myself some room to work. So I'm gonna take this off. Another tip is when they come from the manufacturer, they're pretty tight and you may choose to use this. However, after all the years I've decided that I like to pull that out just a little bit, just so it comes off and on much quicker. So now I'm going to unwrap this from the trellis. And because it's so overgrown, I've given myself permission to just realize I'm going to lose some tomato clusters. So I'm gonna pull this down. Now that I have this down out of the rafters, it seems like I have this big mess and it can be a little intimidating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my time. And again, this is a little different than leaning and lowering a tomato plant that's been properly pruned all season. So I'm going to decide where my single leader is going to be. Now, how do we decide that? I personally like to look for what I believe to be the strongest um, vine out of probably multiple suckers. There's really got, not going to be a right or wrong other than over time, you're going to develop your own system on how you figure out what's best. And because this is so overgrown, I'm probably going to overclip it for the time being. Now that I'm getting close to the end, you can see the deviation between a smaller sucker and a more developed sucker already with tomato clusters and some tomatoes already being formed. So I'm going to choose the better of the two, give myself about a foot or so of additional string, and I'm going to clip just below the second cluster of leaves. You're constantly gonna drop those and that's all right. So you're gonna clip just below the second cluster of leaves. And now we're going to rehang this and we'll continue to prune. So a minute ago, I was working on this side of the vine. So that was to me the front and I was going left. Now I'm on this side, so the back part. And so these are the ones I'm going to move to now the left, which would have been my right a minute ago. We'll figure it out here in a second. And so I'm now going to take this vine and lean it to this side. And I currently don't have a hole. Again, we're refurbishing this line. And I'm simply going to place that on the wire. Now that, I, now that I've leaned this, I've got a good solid foot between the top of the vine that we just clipped and the roller hook itself. And so now I can fully develop this single leader and decide where I wanna go. Now I'm already looking at this and I've kind of changed my mind a little bit now that I've given myself some room that 
I think this vine is, is touching the ground just a little bit more than what I like. And again, you'll find your own way. So I'm just gonna move that down just a little bit. Now I'm going to continue to support the tomato vine all while removing leaves, suckers, and old clusters that are past this harvest and they're, that are now simply just taking nutrient away from that top cluster that we're trying to develop. Right here, I'm getting to the first set of what's going to be the next harvest. This is a little bit lower than what I like, but again, we are refurbishing this line. So now that we're working our way up this vine that we're trying to train, we come to a cluster that some people are gonna to wanna to try to save this leader or these tomatoes. Again, I have this really nice cluster right after that that I would much rather develop a nice cluster than a bunch of little small misshapen clusters. So don't feel bad, just go ahead and clip that, get it out of the way. And now I'm looking at this going, I've got six very nice tomatoes. I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. If I had one or two that were exceptionally small, I would go ahead and clip those off at the time in order to produce these at a much better rate. Now I'm looking just a little bit uh, on down the vine, to about right here, and I have the same situation. I do have a second leader coming off, and I've got this one tomato that should be able to be harvested in 10 days to two weeks, but again, I'm not going to feel bad about cutting this because right after that, I have clusters of tomatoes that we're going to develop. We have leaves, and I'm not worried about, uh, these leaves are there to protect and kind of shade these tomato clusters, but because this canopy up above, I know is going to be so full, I'm not worried about cutting the, the clusters right by the tomatoes. They're gonna get plenty of shade. So again, we have a leaf, we have a sucker coming off the axis of, or the shoulder of the main vine. We can either pinch that off or we can cut it. Now, as we go a little further up, we're going to start getting into the leaves. I do like to leave a leaf right across and then I'll go ahead and cut the next one up where there's not a cluster. Moving on up, now we're really working basically from the knees to the top of my chin. So this is gonna be our next harvesting area. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the leaf and the sucker. I'm gonna leave the leaf across from this tomato cluster. I'm gonna leave the leaf across from this tomato cluster. And I'm gonna take off any remaining leaves up to the point where I have the crown or the tip in which the next tomato cluster is already growing, the next leaf, and then the next set. Now I do have a sucker at the very tip top I'm gonna to get rid of. And now is an opportunity to take a look at this tomato cluster right here. Okay, so when I look at this tomato cluster, we have nine opportunities for tomatoes. So here's the flowers. You already see the tomatoes starting to form. I know that this cluster is not going to support nine tomatoes uh, at the end of the day. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm going to cut off the tip. And what that's gonna do is instead of nine subpar tomatoes, I'm gonna have six great tomatoes and a nice harvestable cluster that I can either cut the cluster itself and sell the cluster still on the vine, or I can pick the individual tomatoes off. Uh, it just really depends on how you want to sell. And I have a nice two foot gap that again, after refurbishing uh, this line, instead of having to, having to move next week, I can simply clip up. And then now we have a nice six foot region of harvestable, both clusters and making new ones up at the top. So if we look down this line of tomatoes, it's kind of a jungle. And if we look to where we just worked, now I've made myself a nice hole. So as I start leaning and lowering left and right, I have a place to start putting tomatoes. And every time we lean and lower, we give ourselves additional holes to give ourselves some more working room. If we look at this row that we did yesterday, everything's clear. The canopy is right along with where we want to be harvesting tomatoes. And we got rid of a lot of excess leaf tissue and stuff in the way. So here's an example of a tomato that was planted in line. 
and it has died for whatever reason. Maybe it didn't get enough water. Maybe it got stepped on. Uh, whatever the case is, it's okay to cut it because we. it's much more valuable to have that room. There is going to be a desire for some people to go ahead and put a transplant in there. I disagree because now you're going to be dealing with a much, much smaller plant that you're going to have to baby as you're dealing with much more mature vines. So just go ahead and cut that and give you some room right down at the bottom. And now we've given ourselves room to work much more mature plants. Now that that's cut, instead of undoing all the clips and trying to save the clips, you're going to spend much more on labor than you would on actual material. So all we have to do is go to where the string is hanging and cut that thing loose. So as we're refurbishing this line, we're coming to an opportunity to make a decision. So we have a vine that has completely folded over, which means all of the cell structure inside of that main leader has been crushed. Even though we have nice solid growth after the fact, in my opinion, this is eventually going to cause problems that this vine will either have the opportunity to, to die out or to heal. I really don't want to take that chance. We are so overgrown that we have plenty of vine to work with. So based off experience, I'm going to cut that. And in which part, a lot of folks would say, okay, this has been deadheaded. Uh, this vine is no longer going to be tolerable. Or this, this vine is no longer going to be worth anything. But that's not true. We can simply develop the next sucker or the next best sucker. So I'm going to lean and lower this just a little bit. So I'm now going to look right here and identify this next sucker is where I'm going to start this vine again. It's always going to be a little different, but after a while, uh, it's going to catch up. Now, when I lean and lower this, most likely it's going to stay in that position for a few weeks. That's okay. I'm going to actually give myself a little note, or you can give your staff a little note by double clicking, by double clicking this area. And that's a visual clue that, hey, pay close attention to this sucker because the next time you clip this plant, it's more than likely going to be here, and it's more than likely going to be to support this sucker and develop the new leader off this vine. That's the real good forgiving thing about these vines is there's always an opportunity to save the vine or to develop another cluster. So now that we've kind of put that vine through rehab, we are going to continue to cut some fairly significant suckers out, cut old clusters out, old leaves and develop this one just like we would anything else. So what we see here is tomatoes that have already been harvested. We're gonna get rid of that and get rid of the corresponding leaf. So we're gonna follow this line down. I'm gonna cut that sucker off and this is a vine that's going to lean left. So we're gonna take it and lean it this way into that hole that we made just a few minutes ago. So here's our hole that we're leaning left and right. And we're now going to look at this vine and see how we're going to prune it. So we have a unique opportunity now to show you what a double liter indeterminate tomato uh, looks like, at least where it splits. So we have the single liter that either can go here or to go here. Now, I personally in this house would only continue to do a single leader. And then we also have to think about the vine that we just rehabbed that's much shorter. Could this take up for that? Absolutely. But because this entire house is based off a single leader system, I'm going to go ahead and cut this and not worry about all the production I theoretically lost because that's simply going to drive more into this vine and it's going to be just like everything else in the house. So from a keeping up perspective between us and the employees, it matches everything else. Now, if you did work in a house where everything was a double leader, my suggestion would be to lean and lower the leader, the double leader as a set. But again, we're not going to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that. Okay, so this is the line that we just cut. And if you notice, it's super gnarly and wrapped up. So we made a good decision. We're just going to go below the last clip and cut that string loose. 
and give ourselves all that fresh room. Now, as I look down, this particular one, the, the last one is leaning right. So now we're gonna lean this one left and I'm gonna pull it down and work this fine. Open up this cage a little bit, like I said before. Now you can unwrap it out of the wires or you can cut it out of the wires. Either one works. Again, you can see me being rough with it. And I'm gonna walk it out this way and work that line. So before I work that down, I can obviously see um, suckers. I can go ahead and prune so I'm not having to walk the whole thing out. And there's significant growth here. Again, these vines are pretty overgrown. So now I can walk a cleaner line out and work it. And I'm gonna clip it as I go to give it some extra support. So again, I'm working off this, I'm working up this line. I'm gonna squeeze the cage, give myself some room. I'm gonna continue to hold what I'm considering the main line at this point and supporting it with the tomato clips. And I can I can look down the line and I can, you're gonna be able to see suckers a little more ready after you've had some time on these plants, and you'll be able to make quicker cuts. Still working my way up the line. Now my string is past the crown. I'm gonna continue to clip. Now I'm looking at the crown. I've got the first cluster. I'm gonna clip it right below the second cluster. Nice and tall. I'm gonna keep that vine off the ground a little bit and I'm gonna clip. So right here we come across uh, two vines that are pretty much dead. Now you could worry about a fungal issue, but because the next two plants on either side of it uh, are very healthy, I'm going to chalk this up to either root damage or uh, insufficient watering. I'm just going to go ahead and get those out of the way because at this point they're just a nuisance. So I'm going to cut those loose up at the top, cut it at the bottom. So if you're wondering what to do at the end of an aisle, um, there's a couple of things to consider. Number one, I'm just, I just went ahead and moved both of those to the right because of the circumstances in which we cut these. This line will be the next to come out and circle around. And the way that we're going to do that is over the next couple of weeks of harvesting this area and then developing this, we're actually going to run this trellis past it, past the row out to the edge of the hoop house, which is why it's so nice both to have a uh, harvest working room and working room to develop the lines out here. That way when you move it, you're gonna unclip it and you're gonna work the vine around and then you're gonna hook it back on this side and it's gonna start going that way. And that's that racetrack where all the ones to the left are gonna come out here, go past it a little bit, and then come off the line, make a turn. The other thing of note is all the ones I have going to the left, the hook is on this side. And once I turn it around, the hook is then going to be turned around and on this side. And as you're working your lines, you can tell which way the hook is facing as to whether they should go left or right. So again, we're refurbishing this line and we're simply going to take a look at it. This is a different way that you can prune this. Instead of working the way down, I can actually give myself room before we move the clip. So there's, uh, you know, just however you prefer to do it. And as I inspect this cluster, I'm seeing one that has a lot of tomatoes and one that has very few. So it makes it an obvious cut to get rid of that cluster. Bring this one out. And again, it's at the end of the line, so I'm extending it past it. And we're gonna develop this line really outside of the row. And I'm gonna continue to clip. I'm coming up to a sucker. 
they look virtually the same. This one is more in line. So I'm gonna develop this line. Now, this is a good opportunity to show you, even though this is the second cluster, I'm going to go ahead and deadhead it right above a leaf in the cluster. This was a nice cluster, so I'm just gonna go ahead and treat this as if it was a tomato cluster. I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got three that are really great with a fourth one on the way. I'm gonna leave that as a cluster of four, like we talked about earlier, and that'll be its own cluster. Here's uh, a good look at uh, a sucker coming out at the axis. I'm gonna pinch that off. I'm going to leave this leaf because it's so much towards the top, it's going to shade these clusters down below. So this is why I would leave this up top versus taking it off down below, which you'll see in a second. One, two, three, four, five. Then I got a bunch of small ones. Get rid of those guys. Cut the suckers. This leaf is facing down, it's gonna get in the way. And now I'm gonna work my way down the vine, getting rid of suckers. These are so low, they would have had to go anyway, but they're brown, so they especially need to go. Getting rid of old clusters, getting rid of suckers. This vine is very overgrown. You're aiming for a naked vine where you can see everything. The other thing that that does is down below where all this stuff is going to be jumbled up, it helps create airflow. Here's an example of a whole big sucker. Look at that. Now, these are great tomatoes. So one other trick that you can do is get rid of everything past that really nice cluster. You're essentially deadheading that. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. This is a little anti what I was saying earlier, but I'm using this as an example of these are your vines. You do what makes you happy. I'm going to go ahead and do that indicator to myself that, hey, I'm going to I'm going to address this line at a later date. So whenever this is harvested, I can go ahead and cut that down below and not have to worry about it. I've got the crown. I've got this next set of leaves. This is pretty well established. So I'm going to clip this one up a little higher than what I usually would. Cut that. Go ahead and pinch off this flower cluster where it's going to be underdeveloped. And now look, we have all this nice space. We can skip this vine and then move the next one over. And now you can see how making that room makes it much easier to lean and lower and develop these lines. So look at all that room I have. I'm going to clip it up up top. I'm going to pick a sucker to develop. And I'm going to start cutting these off. I've got a sucker. I like to start with the suckers first. So I'm working this line. There's a lot of overgrowth, a lot of suckers. Our harvest area is going to be, again, from about mid-thigh to about my chin. So anything past and below this sucker, I don't even, er, past this tomato cluster, I can go ahead and just get rid of. And that's gonna save me a lot of time, a lot of decision makings, and I can just keep on going. And I'm gonna expose this line. I'm gonna create some airflow. I'm gonna make a lot of room. I'm not gonna give any bugs, any ladders to crawl up. I mean, there is a ton of growth here. And if I see something on the next line that's I know I'm going to cut, you're right there. Be efficient with your movements. You're already low. Just make those cuts. Now I have this nice naked line. I can go back up. I always like to go up and then down because you wind up missing stuff. If the tomato juts out really bad like that, that's a good opportunity to come in here, and kind of straighten it out. Again, here's another cluster. It does have tomatoes, but again, I would much rather have this nice cluster here. So I'm gonna get rid of those. This also lets you inspect tomatoes as you're going to make sure you don't have any blossom end rot or anything like that that you may need to cut or address. 
Now the top is curving up a little bit. I'm just going to straighten them out and support it. And you'll get the hang of these clips. Or if you drop a clip, don't worry about picking them up every time you drop them or you're going to wear yourself out all day. Get yourself an apron with plenty of pockets. You can keep your clippers in there, keep some water in there, you keep the clips in there, and it's going to save you from having to get up and get down. If you buy these clips in bulk, and I'm talking about, you know, 5,000, 1,000 at a time, the per cost goes way down. So you have to consider at the end of the day, your labor and your, your employee's labor, and is it, is it worth to pick up, you know, a tenth of a cent, or is it worth staying efficient and staying productive? So this is a good example of this line is past where everything else is, but it's a much longer line and much stronger. Because we're leaning and lowering, I'm going to go ahead and extend this past the other line. It's okay to leapfrog it and maybe even pull this one up that wasn't as long. Because at the end of the day, it's in the, it's in the eye of the beholder. There's no right, there's no wrong. I'm giving this thing plenty of room to run and untangle. And then once I move this along, whichever one's taller will be the one that runs longer. Tomatoes are funny because you can keep looking at a vine and keep adjusting. Kind of need to know when to let it go and move on to the next one. So I've made myself another hole. I've got this one that's going to go that way. I've got this one that's going to go the other way. So I'm going to skip to the next one. It's fairly tall. I'm going to drag it out to that hole we just created. Extend my line. You start giving it some initial support, deciding on which leader I'm going to develop. There's a fork in the road. I'm going to go with the one that's more straight. I'm going to completely flip that all the way to the top. Now that I'm already at the top, I'm going to start working my way down, beginning with the suckers only. Sucker. Sucker, this one was broke anyway. And we start seeing about my knee is where next week's harvest is going to be. And this is the week after. So anything below this line, I'm getting rid of. I'm making room, I'm making airflow. Be careful not to cut the line but you've seen us repair it. If you wind up cutting tomatoes, it's okay. You're making better ones. All right, and since we've moved these three vines over, now we've created holes on this side so as we start leaning and lowering these guys, we have room to put them. So now that I've made those holes, I'm gonna take a look at these vines. There is a ton of growth on here. I'm gonna, before I even move anything, I'm just gonna decide to go ahead and cut some of these leaders already. Just a ton of tomatoes coming off of here. Don't panic, making better ones. You can see how, that would have been a lot to deal with right there. That's a big vine. Just a lot. There's a lot here to go over. I think we're pretty fortunate to be able to see a tunnel like this. This is a great operation. This is just a good example of when you're farming, things can get away from you real easy, especially when you have the kind of springs that we've had. You know, you got to forgive yourself for letting things get out of hand because a lot of this is out of your control. So it's a good opportunity for you guys to see a lot of different. Uh, tomatoes. Uh, so check this one out. So this this one is a fairly long leader. This one's much, much smaller, but it's nice and healthy. We've got so much to work with here. I'm actually going to cut off the bigger one right above that nice tomato cluster just to give us some extra room because I think we're going to need it 
given how much vegetative growth we have over here. There's already been tomatoes harvested at this side. So now before we even have to deal with wrestling with this, I can go ahead and get rid of all of this and make one nice clean vine. It's much easier to move. And like I said, there's so many different ways to do this. You're gonna find your own or a combination of what you do. And don't be surprised if your employees have their own way. At the end of the day, what's important is airflow at the bottom, nice consistent fruit sets at the harvest line and nice healthy root zones up at the top. As long as you can find a happy medium between you and your employees and what your time allows, you're gonna be good. I can go ahead and move this one now. Set the line, hold on to the main stem, clip up as I go. I'll develop this top cluster. Let me give this one a little extra support. The vine is going to tell you when you need to put more support. Just trust your instinct. So this is a good example of, I've got this tomato cluster. I've got a couple that have fell off, no big deal, but I've got one, two, three, four, five really nice tomatoes. Let me see if I can do this without breaking it. Nice and consistent. And I get these two wonky ones on the end that are never going to be ready by the time these are ready, which means then you're going to have to have this whole decision with yourself later on as to whether you're going to cut it or not. Just let's, let's get this over with now. Cut it. All the energy that would have went to developing these two are now going to go into this nice cluster by you know, like 10 days from now. That's going to be perfect. And you don't have to worry about it. So just save yourself the time. Get rid of that stuff as you go. So we just moved this line over. This is over here in this big mess of a vine that there's actually two vines right here. Uh, this one, this very first one is gonna go left here in a minute. This one, this other one on the other side that you can't really see is gonna go right into this nice big hole that we moved. So I'm gonna look at this and uh, I know I'm gonna move this one first because I've made that hole. I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Uh, everything that I can, so I'm not having to move as much. I'm probably going to work the other side. And, and working the other side, I really get a picture of what's going on. This vine is a beast. There's just a lot going on. So I'm going to make myself some room. Some of this has been deadheaded already, just from, looks like natural damage. Start cutting suckers. Start cutting suckers. Okay, now, now I'm working with the main part of this vine. I mean, this is really tangled up. This is a mess. It's all right. I'm going to get through it together. I'm going to unhook. These two vines are tangled up. So I can lay this one on the ground. Remember, you can be rough with these guys. They're stronger than what you think. And even if I just temporarily get this out of the way, that's fine. So, boom, oof. So now you can see this vine is now free of where it needs to be. I'm gonna bring it, I thought, so what was gonna be over the hole, but it looks like it's much longer. And you're gonna find that some vines just get naturally longer than others. So, I mean, this vine is super long, so we're actually going to have to put it uh, in one of these ladder holes. I'm gonna clip it up. And I'm actually keeping this vine pretty tight as I'm also working with slack while keeping the bottom of this line tight. And I'm pinching it with one hand and I'm clipping it. And there's still a ton on here. And this is really kind of unexpected. And again, we're really dealing with the house that, this is in need of a lot of cleaning. I'm actually going to leave this on the ground for a minute and really examine what all I can take off. So right now, I'm basically just stripping everything off this vine because it's so long, there's so much, so overgrown. I just need room to see where I'm actually going to wind up putting it. Now, a second ago, I hung it way past where I wanted it to go, but, but because it looks like we're able to take off so much, I may be able to move it back. You know, that's the thing about tomatoes is they're, 
they're pretty consistent as to how they grow, but even transplants planted the same day, the same lot out of a seed package, you know, they, they're all different just a little bit. So you really, really just got to trust your instinct, and over time you're going to develop an eye for a little hokey, but just really listening to the tomato plant and letting it tell you what to do. This is going to be much taller than what I want in this area. So I'm just really kind of playing with where this thing is going to go. And I know I'm going to move this one over so I can scoot that down. And I think that's right exactly where we need to be. So look, we've got that nice vine that's nice and trimmed. It's right along the ground. This harvest area is going to be a little wonky. But now that this thing is getting straight like this row is, over the next couple of weeks, this thing's really going to start to look uniform. I'm going to elect to leave some of these tomatoes, even though they're a little lower, but they're still off the ground and they're still going to be shaded. Now, you may feel like these vines are going to be a little naked right now and maybe there's not enough foliage. But remember, we just told the vine, hey, none of that was valid anymore. These leaves, these clusters are now what's important. So put your energy into there. So you'll see over the next few days, these really puff out and really start shading and keeping that. Number one, the UV has to go through a diffused um, greenhouse cover. It's going through 50% shade. The leaves are further going to keep the sun's UV off these tomatoes, which you know can cause some spots. And so they're really going to be protected. So if, if you've got to prune hard, which is what we're doing now, just know that you're telling this plant to up production as to what you really need it for. And this is going to be a nice cluster. Now, this vine really came out nice after, I, after we get a chance to look at it. I'm going to support it just a little more. It's kind of loose. We've taken so much off, now we're just pinching off suckers. This vine really took a beating and we had to prune it really aggressively, but we're not worried about it because I know that these plants are much stronger than what people give them credit for. And I keep saying that over and over again, but it's something I know that when I first started out, I really worried about. And now this vine that we're leaning the lower into the opposite side, Got a little bit more room to work with. And we're basically just going to do this the rest of the day and see what the, the vines tell us to do. And at the end, we'll have a nice consistent crop. Airflow, harvest zone, nice tips. And then the following week after harvest, we do it again. So we've made some room. We've got some going this way. We've got some going this way. Now we're starting to get some overflow. Uh, it's just a continuation of what we've been doing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the closer vine that we've already started leaning this one over, but um, I've got one going this way. I've got this one that's eventually gonna go this way, and I've got this next vine which I know is gonna go about in this hole. So I've given myself to room uh, room to run. This vine is a mess. I mean, it's a mess, a mess. Um, in fact, it's so much of a mess. I'm going to develop one of the single leaders or one of the smaller ones. See if you can get in here. So I don't know if you can tell by where I'm at, but I've got this really nice thick vine that typically I would use as my leader. And it's got nice clusters on it. It's a great vine, but man, we just got a lot to deal with. So I've got this other very healthy, but smaller vine that's probably going to wind up being a couple of foot shorter. I'm going to choose to cut off the big one because of the circumstance. Uh, look at that, another one snuck up on me. So now I got two that are about the same. But because this one is more in line versus this one's off to the side, this could uh, potentially crinkle up on me later on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that very nice vine as well. And then I'm going to grab this spool. I'm going to detangle it a little bit. And again, man, these things are tight. So I'm going to drag this dude over. This is my hole. I'm going to unwind it. I'm going to clip it. And again, I've got one hand on the main vine that I want. And I'm kind of 
taking the string line, holding it, clipping it. I'm just, right now, I'm just clipping the main parts. I'm going to go through and really clip it up here in a minute. Where I made that cut, that transition, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple in there because I'm going from a very thick vine to a much smaller vine. And I just want to make sure that it's nice and supported. I'm gonna, and look, I'm holding, I'm putting quite a lot of pressure. This vine is holding all the weight right now, right here. So I'm slowly taking that off and distributing that over all of these clips, moving up. There's a nice sucker, but I'm gonna get rid of it. And I'm gonna go right in between that first and second cluster. That'll be the top. I may elect to move that up here in a minute. I'm gonna start, I mean, this thing is a mess. I keep saying that, but it's pretty rough. So, I'm gonna go down the clusters. Look at this cluster. Should be able to get in pretty close on this. So this cluster is actually, it's, this is a, a bit of an anomaly and this is the variety here, but I do have a couple I'm gonna take off. I'm just gonna pinch those off. These all look fairly good. I think they're gonna make a nice sale, so I'm gonna leave those. You can see the ripening process right below that. So all, I'm gonna leave all those. I'm gonna take the sucker and the leaf in between. I'm gonna take off some of this excess foliage, but leave a little bit of it. Again, we're gonna put all this energy into these leaves. Look at all the energy that's going to the tomatoes versus the leaves now, but we're still leaving these to be developed. And over the next few days, they're gonna wind up shading it. Again, this is a very aggressive pruning, what we're doing today. I'm just kind of working our way up and down the line, clearing out all this old stuff, making nice airflow. Keep repeating myself because that's what you're going to do all day. You're going to repeat yourself. It's nice little reminders of what to look out for. So, again, you'll see this one's a little lower, this one's a little higher. I like to play about a foot or so in between, it's completely fine. And now that I've moved that, I've made myself some room. This one we've already developed, but now I can move this next one over. It's already pretty much hanging up. Clip. Tomato clusters that have already been harvested. I like to straighten out these crooks. And you'll figure out, like some people, like I, I probably clip too much, uh, just because I like to keep them straight. That kind of keeps them from bowing out like that because. If if you keep them too far apart, they tend to twist because of all the weight. But as often as I clip, I'm kind of distributing the weight a little more even. And that's going to keep that vine from kinking up like this. I mean, see, this is real bad because all that cell tissue has already been snapped. I'm going to cut that. And I saved. I saved this one, but it's also crimped. So I'm gonna cut that one as well. So at this point, you may say, well, he's now deadheaded the vine, and now the vine's no longer gonna be viable. But just like we did earlier, I've got one, two suckers. So two additional opportunities. I'm gonna leave both of those. I'm gonna double click right below it to give myself an indication. So next week, whenever those suckers are a little longer, I can pick the best of, of either one of those. So I've got this opportunity and this opportunity in a sucker. So yeah, I've got this deadhead, but it wasn't worth cutting these tomatoes because they're nice clusters. So next week, when it comes time to move this, I, I wound up not even leaning and lowering this tomato because we need to rehab this one a little bit. So this one's still straight up. It's more than likely going to go this way after the cluster tells us what to do. This one's already been moved. Now I've got this one that can be moved. Now, I will say, I just told you I wasn't going to move that, but because I need the room, I am going to move it over slightly. So this may be an example later on of two tomato vines right next to each other actually going the same way instead of going back and forth. It's totally fine. So now that I move this vine over, I'm going to establish my main leader. 
I've actually got two opportunities here, but again, we've got so much mass to work with here on this house. And now I'm just gonna cut all these old harvested clusters off, cut all the leaves off, tell them the plants produce up top. I've got my first cluster of tomatoes here. I'm gonna leave those. I've got one old one here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off because it's gonna be on the ground. It's a lot of good growth on this one. So once we got rid of all that garbage, really giving this plant a fighting shot of producing some really nice fruit. We'll check on that later on. So you can see right now, now we've got this whole section of tomatoes that are all roughly the same size or at least within a foot of each other. We've got all this airflow right down here and you can now see this line of tomatoes, these yellow tomatoes that are now beginning to ripen and this will be next week's harvest area. And again, we'll be harvesting this layer in a couple of weeks as we lean and lower it. And just imagine all the cutting that we're doing today being reduced by like 90% because that's about what we're taking off. So it's a much, much faster process. The vines are already going the right way. There's a lot less decisions to make, just a lot faster. So let me see here. I got this one going that way. I got these two going this way. So I'm going to skip this one. We got another viciously overgrown vine here. And we're going to have to take off a lot of really nice tomato clusters. But it's just all in the way of both plants. So we're going to pull it down. Stretch it out. Clip. We'll hold on to that line. Again, lots of reputation in this work. This is the kind of work you can listen to a lot of audiobooks on. Lots of suckers. No right or wrong. You'll develop a feel for it the longer you do this. You'll see these suckers with tomato clusters. You can prune the cluster back. You can take the sucker off. Save that cluster. This one's a, a little lower than anticipated, so I'm actually going to move it up or move it back a little bit. Wind it up a little bit. That really shows this nice harvestable fruit that's already set in color. Gives you an opportunity to inspect the clusters and see about it. So we're just going to continue this. Uh, we did this one yesterday. And I'm already seeing, that's the thing about it. You can always find something to cut on if you, <laughs> if you let yourself go crazy. But um, you can see, again, a nice straight line up at the top, nice harvestable area. This one's a little bit more vegetative than what I like. Um, but we had to take so much off of this one, similar to this one. It's a different variety, so it looks a little different. So just know that if you interplant different varieties, one may look a little bit more naked versus a little bit more full. Again, the same principles that we've talk, been talking about today. You know, let, let that plant tell you what to do. Let your instincts take over after a while, and um, you'll be just fine. So if you make a bad cut, there's always an opportunity for another sucker. And uh, we're going to continue on this, and we'll follow up at the end. So that's our video. I think what we're going to do is revisit this in about a week and show you what happens to these vines once they get very aggressively pruned. And we're going to see the growth between this set of fruit that we just discussed at length. We're going to visit this harvesting process and we're going to take a look and see what happens after the cleanup and all that. So we're going to continue filming and we'll see you in just a minute. All right, folks, so we filmed this over a couple of days and the next video that we're going to put out will be the fifth video in this series. But what we want to do is give it a couple of weeks and then show you how these vines really took to the pruning and how well they're doing now. So that's a lot of information this week. And I know this video in particular was very long. So if you're still listening to this, congratulations. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below or you can get a hold of us at contact at bootstrapfarmer.com and we'll do anything we can to help you. Have a great day.